Ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to welcome at Ukraine Crisis Media Center, Mr. Derek Chalet, um, Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs. Hello, thank you everyone. This morning I had productive meetings with the Deputy Prime Minister, the Chairman of the National Security Council, and the Minister of Defense, Koval. This is the beginning of a very important week for the United States and Ukraine. This Wednesday, President Obama will be meeting with the President-elect in Warsaw. Tomorrow, uh, in Brussels, I will be joining the Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel, for meetings of the NATO-Ukraine NATO Commission. We discussed two key items this morning, U.S. assistance for Ukraine, including the 18 million in security assistance we have pledged so far, which is almost doubling the security assistance for Ukraine, and importantly, strengthening our long-term defense cooperation, especially in helping Ukraine build a highly effective armed forces and strengthening its defense institutions. Ukraine is a close valued partner of the United States and of the NATO alliance. Ukraine's armed forces have served with courage with the United States and our NATO partners in Afghanistan, in Kosovo, and in anti-piracy efforts off the coast of Africa. We appreciate Ukraine's efforts over the past two decades to contribute to regional and global security and stability. This morning, we also discussed the ongoing violence perpetrated by Russian-backed separatists in the East, seeking to undermine the democratically elected government of the unified Ukraine. I'd like to reiterate that the United States condemns and rejects Russia's occupation and attempted annexation of Crimea and remains committed to working with Ukraine and other partners to find a peaceful resolution to the conflict. As I told Minister Koval and the Deputy Prime Minister this morning, the Ukrainian security services have distinguished themselves and shown restraint and professionalism as they seek to uphold law and order and ensure peace and stability. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to visit the State Border Guard Service Base here in Kiev and met with members of the Guard and the leader of the State Border Guard Security Service. I commend the work that the Guards and the Ukrainian Security Services as a whole do every day to protect this country's territorial integrity. I also had the opportunity yesterday to walk through the Maidan and witness with my own eyes the extraordinary courage uh, and patriotism of the people uh, who were in the Maidan for many months uh, this past winter. And I want to say that that serves as a symbol for the United States of the courage of the Ukrainian people, their commitment to democracy, and it's a re the Maidan and, and, and our support for Ukraine, uh, we are here to reaffirm today. And it's what President Obama will reaffirm when he sees the president-elect on Wednesday and what the Secretary of Defense will reaffirm when he meets with the Ukrainian Minister of Defense and NATO partners tomorrow in Brussels. So thank you, and with that, I'd be happy to take a few of your questions. Just a sec, I'm gonna give the microphone to a few of you. Derek, what do you think this attack overnight on the border uh, base in Luhansk signifies, and do you have any more details you can share with us? I, I don't have any more details I can share. Uh, we obviously did discuss uh, this attack in my meetings this morning. News is, is breaking as we speak, as all of you know. Uh, this is uh, a great concern, and it's a further example of the destabilizing activities that we believe are supported by Russia uh, in the East, and it's something that we strongly condemn. Okay, who's there? Yeah. Uh, the Ukrainian government uh, frequently characterizes its uh, adversary in the East as terroristic. Uh, from a U.S. government perspective, is uh, the Ukrainian government waging uh, counterterrorism operations uh, in the East. Thanks. Well, clearly what we are seeing uh, in the East are terrorist activities. Uh, it's a de deeply destabilizing, uh, not only in the East, but more broadly in Ukraine. It's something, as I said, that we condemn uh, in the strongest uh, possible terms. And it's, it's those kinds of efforts uh, that uh, is why we're seeking to help strengthen Ukraine's border security efforts in particular. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to see some of the capability that the United States has helped provide recently, most specifically 
on border security. And it's that kind of assistance that we are, we are interested in and uh, talking to the Ukrainian uh, defense officials about providing in the future. Here. Hello, could you tell us a bit more of the details about this $18 million uh, in security assistance? What is it exactly? What is that aid and where is it being used? Thank you. Sure. We can, uh, we can provide you with a more detailed uh, listing of the specifics. These are requests uh, that the Ukrainian officials have made of us over the previous several months. Uh, it's assistance that the Vice President Biden announced when he was here in Kiev uh, several weeks ago. It started with urgent assistance that they needed uh, in the form of food, MREs, but it's also now in basic field supplies, uh, tents. It's non-lethal assistance. It's, it's roughly doubling the assistance that we had provided uh, Ukraine up to, the, uh, up to this point. And we are interested in providing further assistance. The Ukrainians have asked us for a very long list of, uh, of items that they are, uh, need to acquire. Um, and we, the United States, as well as uh, close partners of ours, Poland, uh, France, the United Kingdom, uh, will be working with Ukraine in the coming weeks to help fulfill those requests. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on just a sec. Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll make it in English. Uh, what surprises can we wait uh, because of Russia took, uh, became a chairman in the Security Council of United Nations? Uh, what can be the consequences of that? The, the, sorry, I didn't hear the first part uh, of the question. Yeah. As I remember, yesterday Russia became the chairman in the Security Council uh, of the United Nations Organization. What can be the consequences to Ukraine or to the United States uh, because of this um, decision? Well, as you know, we have, uh, we have used – the UN Security Council has taken up the issue of the instability uh, here in Ukraine uh, several times over the past several months, and the United States will seek to continue to, to have conversations in the United Nations and other regional and global organizations about the, the de destabilizing activities that we believe are backed by the Russian Federation here in Ukraine. But in terms of specifically what it may mean for the Russians to be the presidency of the Security Council, I can't really comment on that. We have a question here. Наступне питання. Тетяна Білик, п'ятий канал, програма «Особливий погляд». Я хотіла запитати, ви, ну, Америка запропонувала, що буде включати санкції, зокрема, щодо співпраці у оборонній сфері з Росією. І як ви ставитеся до того, що Україна сама заторможує такі зупинки співпраці? Well, as you noted, the United States uh, and, our, and our European partners have implemented, uh, what we believe, significant sanctions on uh, the Russian Federation, and we've made very clear that uh, we are prepared to do more when it comes to sanctions. When it comes to uh, Ukraine's relationship with Russia, we believe that Ukraine and Russia need to have a relationship, that uh, it's a long historic uh, – they have long historic ties. We did talk this morning with the Deputy Prime Minister and the Defense Minister and the National Security Advisor about the defense relationship and particularly the industrial relationship uh, uh, between Ukraine and Russia. And we don't, we don't question the validity of that relationship at all, uh, but we are interested in helping Ukraine as it seeks to diversify uh, uh, its industrial base. And the last question is going to be from the publication of the State Border Service in Ukrainian, please. Сьогодні ми бачимо, що на східному кордоні відбувається дійсно війна, і ваша допомога це дуже корисно, спальні мішки і так далі. Зрозуміло, що зброю ніхто не надасть, але є необхідність допомоги українським прикордонникам засобами індивідуального захисту, такими як бронежилети, каски і, можливо, бронетанкові машини. Чи є можливість надати такі засоби допомоги якомога швидше, обходячи всі бюрократичні механізми, тому що це буде дуже довго, допомога потрібна so as I mentioned yesterday, I had the opportunity to meet with the, the leader, the general, uh, who heads the State Border Security Guard Service 
and see some of the capability that the United States has provided over the years, but also in the past several weeks, uh, the urgent uh, needs that the state border uh, services needed. We talked about future assistance. We are very interested in providing uh, future assistance to the state uh, uh, border guards as well as the military as a whole. We understand the, the urgent needs and, and the events of this morning only further illustrate the urgent needs. And so that's something that when I go back to Washington, uh, I will be working on. Thank you very much. We understand we're conscious of your schedule. So thank you very much for thank being you. with us. Thank you.